Anthropic came out today with a surprise announcement with their release of Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And this model has already outperformed their flagship Claude 3 Opus model, which was just released about 100 days ago. When you compare Claude 3 Sonnet across the board, just about on almost all metrics, with the exception of math problem solving, as well as the zero shot chain of thought MMLU score, this ranks best in class across the board in a number of different benchmarks, from graduate level reasoning to human eval, which is the coding benchmark. It has a 92% score. When you compare that to GPT-40 or Opus, this is a significant improvement. All right, so in the video, I'm just going to go over the blog post and then I'm going to touch on the paper that they released. And then finally, at the end of it, I'm going to show you probably one of the coolest features that I have seen in one of these large language model interfaces from one of these big providers, which is what they're calling artifacts, which I'll show you at the end of the video. They mentioned within the blog post that this new model outperforms a number of different competitor models across a wide range of evaluations. Claude 3.5 Sonnet is now available basically anywhere that you could previously access the model. So you can access it on Claude.ai within their iOS app, or if you want to use it from their API, you can use the Anthropic API, or you can use Amazon Bedrock or the Google Cloud Vertex API. Now, the other thing with this model is it's going to be priced at $3 per million tokens of input and $15 per million tokens of output with a 200,000 token context window. So when you compare this pricing, considering that it is more performant than Opus, both in terms of speed as well as capability, this is a very competitive price point for using their API. Now, the other thing that's impressive is that this operates at twice the pace of Claude 3 Opus. To have a frontier model like this that is already twice as fast in just about 100 days goes without saying how impressive it is. But the things that they really called out here that it does stand out with is the graduate level reasoning as well as the MMLU, but also coding performance. If you're going to be using this for coding tasks, it is going to be a really good model. And the other thing that was interesting here is in an internal agentic coding evaluation, Sonnet solved 64% of the problems which outperformed Claude 3 Opus, which only solved 38%. Agents have had a ton of buzz this year. It's still very early. You can see that these numbers are still relatively low, considering that you do want to have these things as close to 100% as possible. But we are starting to see these significant leaps in performance from the previous iteration of the different models that were out there. They mentioned for their evaluation tests of this, it uses the model's ability to fix a bug or add functionality to an open source code base given a natural language description of the desired improvement. They mentioned when instructed with provided and relevant tools, Claude 3.5 Sonnet can independently write, edit, or execute code with sophisticated reasoning and troubleshooting capabilities. It mentions that it handles code translations with ease, making it particularly effective for updating legacy applications and migrating code bases. Now, another exciting piece with this is as we're starting to see more of these multimodal models come online, is that this is the strongest vision model to date. They describe that the improvements are most notable for tasks that require visual reasoning, like interpreting charts or graphs, but it also mentions that it can accurately transcribe text from imperfect images. You can think of retail examples, maybe trying to decipher a receipt or different logistics information or maybe invoices and what have you but it can also accurately transcribe text even from imperfect images. It's one thing to actually be able to OCR different texts, but it's a whole other thing to be able to transcribe text from imperfect images. Right now, I just want to quickly show you one of the really good demonstrations of the vision capabilities, just to give you a sense on what you can do with this new model, especially within the Claude interface that they have within their web app here. So you see here that they're uploading a number of different charts, as well as some simple instructions. It's asking for all of the data to be transcribed within JSON. And here you see that it's outputting within this nice little, what they're calling artifact on the right hand side here, which can be used like a code interpreter, but you can also use this to visualize things. Like if you're making an SV or if you're rendering something like a website or a web app, this new right-hand panel that you see on the screen here, this is what they're calling artifacts. And within the chat window here, you're able to create these new artifacts. And just like this, you can see like it's using a code interpreter style artifact where it's writing all that code to visualize that it has the context of from the previous step here. You can start to get an idea on how you can leverage both that vision capability as well as that new reasoning capability from that model 
and combine them to have these really interesting outputs. You can see there, it made a presentation, it made an interactive chart, all of which you could view within the artifacts. Now, in terms of the evaluation metrics for the vision capability, you can see that it does have leading performance basically across the board with just one exception here where GPT-4.0 does beat it by a slight margin. Just like I showed you the artifacts feature earlier, this is really a great new feature, which I think is going to drive a lot of people potentially from ChatGPT to the Claude web app and their Claude app, because what this will allow you to do is as you saw in the previous demo, now in addition to that chat interface, you also have this new preview window, which you can leverage for things like creating visualizations, for creating websites, for creating a number of different things that you can interact with. So instead of having to copy and paste code from what ChatGPT or what Claude has created, what you're able to do here is you're able to see that all rendered and streamed out right within this artifacts viewer all within this chat interface here. So it makes this chat interface a lot more interactive. The first time I saw something similar to this was actually with Gemini, where you could open the piece of code in something like a Replit workspace. But this takes it one step further, where now instead of having it on a separate platform that it links out to, it has that all within the Claude interface itself. This is gonna be incredibly useful I was trying it out a little bit earlier. You can go over to Claude, create an account if you don't already have one, and you can start to play around with it. If I say, create me a classic helicopter game, and I click enter here. So you do have to turn on artifacts, just like you saw in that video. And then once you have it turned on, you'll have this interface here. This is my example here, and you can see how much quicker this model is. The combination of how quick it is, as well as how competent it is, gives you a really good sense on the different things that you can do with it. You have this classic helicopter game. You can see the preview there. There's even a game over when there's that collision that's been detected. And then you have all of the code here. This is going to be incredibly useful to actually see that the output that you've gotten is something that is effective and working. Being able to have the sandbox environment for these things like artifacts, especially in a coding context, is going to be just amazing to play around with. There's a little bit more in terms of safety and privacy that you can read up on within the blog post. And then the other thing that's exciting is they're also going to be releasing the other versions of Claude 3.5 for both their Haiku model as well as Claude 3 Opus later this year. I can only imagine what the Opus model of this will be capable of when it's released. And they also mentioned that they are exploring features, that they are developing new modalities that they're going to be featuring for different use cases, as well as they're exploring features like memory that they're looking to include for user preferences and be able to interact with your history that you've created from interacting with Claude. Overall, I think in terms of all of the recent announcements, this is probably one of the more exciting ones that I've seen because not only is it a more capable model, you also have this new UX that you can experience with this new artifacts window. Now, if you're looking for more information on the model itself, you can check out this link to this paper that I'll link. There's a number of different things like they included the needle in a haystack evaluation just to give you a sense on how capable the model is at recalling the different contexts, especially on those larger limits like the 200,000 token context that it has. And then it also plots across a number of different areas its capabilities. It gives you metrics across coding, finance, law, medicine, etc. You can see some of these are significantly higher in terms of finance, law, philosophy, even. These are all considerably higher than Claude 3 Opus. And you got to remember that 3 was just released about 100 days ago. Huge kudos to the team over at Anthropic for both releasing this new capable model, but also for releasing this new innovative way on how we can leverage these models with UX. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.